Professor and physicist Silka Boyd combines her passion for science and art to create breathtaking photographs of weather and nature. And see, this is the, the kind of picture that I do like because very few people crawl around on the lawn in the morning. <laughs> but the truth is that it is surprising what one can learn. My name is Silke Boyd. I'm a scientist. <laughs> I am definitely a scientist. I have a vivid interest in atmosphere and weather. And uh, one of the ways to really get into a subject matter is to take pictures, is to paint, is to observe daily. I did weather reports for the Star Tribune for a while, neighborhood weather reports, which required a picture of weather. And that basically challenged me to capture in a picture conditions that a person who isn't here cannot experience. And that was actually kind of fun. So after this program with the newspaper sort of ended, I kept on doing that. So I'm taking a daily picture of weather, but it has expanded way beyond, beyond weather because I like the challenge. I never know what it's going to be in the morning and I cannot really look for it. It surprises me every day. Oh, wow, I missed it. I almost got that bee. That might have been my surprise shot today. <laughs> When you pay attention to where the shadow goes, you can get a nice backlighting on the, on the flower, which in a macro shot can show some really nice structure. And so I try to use perspectives that are unusual, zooming in, using macro photography, and these kinds of things to, to make it interesting, to make it memorable. Right there, for example. And really, anybody could do this. And then you observe this dewdrop. Sometimes you have to play a little bit with the angle because there are angles in which the dewdrop will appear brilliant and others in which it just refracts light away. And how to take a good photograph? It's actually <laughs> strange. I have photos that I've basically shot out of the hip. They turned out very, very nice. And I have photos that I've waited for for several minutes to get just the right light and the right angle. So it, it really depends. <laughs> but I've noticed that if I actually actively seek a motive, I'm less successful than if I just shoot. <laughs> hey, Berksy. And then there are challenges like dogs, who think they must be in every picture. When I take my pictures, I cannot say I'm going actually out to take pictures. Uh, my life is pretty busy, but I always have a camera with me. I like to take my children, in particular my daughter and my dog, out for longer walks outside. Simply it increases the chance that I see a view that I like, that could be my daily picture. <laughs> One of my favorite ones is actually this tree lady. It's a children's song. Once there was a dandy lady who loved to dance, they say. She had beautiful hair of gold and loved to dance all day. As time passed by and she grew old, her hair all turned to gray. Now when the dandy lady dances, her hair all blows away. The after-dinner sprint to the playground shelter was compensated by this breathtaking display of supernumerary rainbows or stack of rainbows. The five to six weaker inner color bands are generated by interference in a very homogeneous rain field, a rare sight and one that was important in understanding the wave nature of light, a physicist's delight in other words. Science and art are two ways to look at the world. Um, science comes more from a measurable standpoint, observation with a conscious plan, while art would perhaps try to understand the world more from a hmm, emotional point of view. 
I'm obsessed. <laughs> yes, ask my family. They will, say, they will tell you that I'm obsessed. Because it is actually amazing um, how often we don't pay attention. And what the photos have done for me is they have sharpened my eye for phenomena that we sometimes might not even see, like halos or light pillars or auroras. So when I post these pictures and I say, hey, did you see these sun pillars this morning and they're blowing snow? Then people are always amazed. Wow, this was great and I saw it too. So that makes me kind of happy. I live in the prairie. It is the environment that's around me. And as such, that's where I find my motives. Therefore, I'm a prairie artist. I'm in the prairie. <laughs> I actually, the idea to submit something to the exhibition was coming from friends. So friends saying to me, your pictures are really great. You should submit to this exhibition. And so I did submit a few pictures that I thought would follow the prairie theme. And I was lucky enough to be accepted with two pictures. So oftentimes it also helps to just experiment. So I'm asked where I even find the time for that. The truth is, maybe I'll use five minutes a day to do that. But it's sort of an escape. <laughs> it's something completely different from the normal running around, teaching, <laughs> trying to get everything done type of thing. And it doesn't take that long to take a couple of pictures. Do you have an